is that the New York Rangers are up 2-1. Over to Florida Panthers, mm -hmm. big game tonight. Joining us is not only a Rangers legend, but obviously a hockey icon. The captain, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Messier. Yeah. 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 Good to see you. Good to see everybody. And it sounds like I got to get to the snake pit. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. Have you ever been to the Indy 500? I have never been to the Indy 500. And as you know, I played for Indianapolis Racers when I was 17 years old, went back in the WHA. So I know Indianapolis. What year was that for the WHA? That was the last year. Uh, it was 78, 79. And I, I told you before, I think, but I, I'm the youngest player to ever uh, fold two uh, franchises at 17 years old, the Cincinnati Stingers and the Indianapolis Racers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that was just by happenstance, obviously. It was not because of you. But 1978, if you were to look up photos of the snake pit from then, what was happening cool. in turn three, if your 17-year-old Mark Messier would have wandered in there, mm. I don't know if you have the hockey career that you have. I'm going to be I'm, – so I'm thankful oh, that you've never been over. I, I fell into a few with snake pits over my career. <laughs> <laughs> Moose, that feels like a part of the hockey culture. Is that an accurate thing? I, I think the hockey culture does like to have a good time. Are the guys modern day still doing that, you think? Well, I, I, I think I think they probably are, and I think it's all part of it. I think, you know, you look at a, when we're 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, uh, playing a professional sport, traveling around the world, of course we're going to, have a good time and if you're not having a good time there's something wrong uh you know you're doing something that you love uh, you're you're traveling you're exploring new cities seeing the world uh, it was a it was an amazing time and the player should be having a good time all this at the but at the same time making sure that they're committed and ready to play the best of their ability yeah you got to keep the main thing the main thing for sure i, I think everybody has kind of heard that quote which is very real and people should do that take that into life too not just sports like hey you got to got to make sure that the thing that's making sure everything else is happening maintains you know and then we can get into the no, ancillary nobody shit. did that better than wayne gretzky his focus was uh unparalleled in uh, in sport certainly uh when we're younger i mean we're eight days apart uh, wayne's focus was so far ahead of mine at, at an early age uh, he was thinking about what he was going to do from game to game uh uh, and how many goals and assists he was going to score and how we're going to win the game. And I was thinking about where we're going to go after the game. <laughs> hey, you need both of those. You, know, yeah. you, need, you need both of those on a team. And obviously, you getting, yeah. you getting to learn from Wayno obviously goes on to propel you to the incredible career that you had. But I, I heard a story, and uh, I mean, I guess since we're in the vein of having good times and, and stuff like that. Now, I have a story where uh, in my life, I took shrooms in college. And it changed my perspective on how I was going to focus on football that night. It actually did. Force shoot, it happened. My college roommates were there. It was in the college house. Had great, deep conversations with them. Saw things differently. I don't want to say enlightened, but it did flip a switch for me. And I stuck with it. Yeah, the next day I woke up all the way through, and I think without it, now obviously I made a lot of mistakes post then, without it I don't think that I have the mindset to go on to be who I am. I heard there's a similar story about you. Is that accurate and true? Uh, it is. It is true. Um, you know, as an athlete, we spend probably 95 percent or 99 percent of our time on our bodies. And uh, and back then, not a lot on our, on our minds. Uh, it gave me the ability to uh, look at a bigger picture, uh, a vastness that is out there. As you know, we're only uh, utilizing a small portion of the power that we have in our brains. And I was thinking that if I'm going to spend 95 percent working out of the gym, how can I become a better uh, player? How can I understand the game better? How can I become a better pro? Um, and uh, by using my mind better, um, be tougher mentally. Uh, and to your point, I think enlightenment is a good word for it. Uh, it gave me a better perspective. It gave me some humility. And, um, and it just... Just it just it just gave me a better perspective of the whole experience that I was in in the professional sports. Uh, it made me focus more, um, and probably more than anything, the, the all the possibilities that were out there. Um, it was it 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 worked for me, um, and um, it was something that I don't regret. And um, uh, wow, what what an experience! To your point. Yeah, and we won't – it's not for everybody, obviously. Nothing in this world is for Absolutely. everybody. But for me, I had just – I mean, I had the worst performance of my life at the biggest, most inopportune time. And I had a lot of people telling me that I shouldn't exist. And there was moments where I was like, yeah, I feel the same way. It, was there something that happened with you? When did you end up doing it? 
Uh, this was back in a, on a trip to uh, Barbados back in the early '80s. Um, I was uh, I like to travel. I like to experience new things, uh, different cultures, different spiritualities, uh, different religions. Uh, traveling the world, doing it. Uh, this was an opportunity that uh, came about. I didn't know much about it, uh, to be honest with you. At that, I was only 18 or 19 years old at the time. And um, but the perspective that it gave me that. Um, I wanted to. I never wanted to get beat in the mental game. I wanted to become uh, um, ironclad in that regard. Uh, this gave me an opportunity to think that my mind. I could expand my mind. I could become uh, at more understanding, more humility, more gratitude to the people that are around me, um, and maybe a better leader. Actually, in in some regards, uh, uh, later on in my career, uh, because of it as well. So what you guys do? Did you guys grind it up, put in peanut butter? Did you put it on pizza? What, what's your peanut butter sandwiches? What you do? Well, if we want to get it, if we want to get into granular level, no, we went out and, and actually picked picked them out of the field, took them home, and uh, boiled uh, boiled some tea. Oh, tea. Okay, we did the tea. All right. Jeez. Wow. I thought it just went straight shit <laughs> yeah. to mouth. Unbelievable. Like, those, those things, those things do not taste great, obviously. But uh, for some people, you know. Well, the fact is, and of course, it wasn't measured, and uh, obviously, we overindulged, and uh, oh, yeah. so that was a whole sure. other experience. Yeah. Yeah, just like the friend that makes you the weed brownies. How much is in this? Oh, it should be about ten milligrams. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Oh, that was a seventy-five mile an hour fastball, right? There. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm in the couch. Okay, sweet. Thanks, bud. Now I got to relive oh, yeah. oh, my yeah. entire. Oh, Life. Go ahead, AJ. Hey, thank you for sharing that, Moose. Thank you, Moose. Go ahead, AJ. I, I do appreciate that. Now, getting on to the ice now with the Rangers, I, I'm curious about overtime and why the Rangers have been successful in overtime. How does the game change, especially in the playoffs? And we, we know how much is on the line. What have the Rangers done, I guess, to, you know, to when it matters the most? Like, these guys seem to step up. They do. Uh, and I think it starts in goal. I think they got so much confidence in their goaltender that they're not worried about making a mistake. And when they do make a mistake, he's there to cover it up. So I think it really does start in goal with Shesterkin, uh, not only for in overtime, but for their overall game. They, uh, The Rangers are a high-octane offense. Uh, they obviously have a tremendous power play. They got, uh, they're got they good off the rush. Uh, they got some dynamic players. Uh, and when you give them open ice, they can take advantage of it. Uh, going into overtime, uh, you can't be afraid uh, of the moment. Uh, you can't play with fear of losing. You have to be on your toes. You got to be over your stick, as we say, and uh, and take the game to the opponent if possible. Um, and I think the Rangers uh, have some game breakers. Uh, you, you know, you think about uh, the guys that uh, put up big numbers during the regular season. But what's incredible about the playoffs, and I say this all the time, is that anybody on the team at any moment can become a hero. And we're looking at a guy like Goudreau this year that, uh, you know, as a Stanley Cup winner, a character guy, does all the little things so well during the regular season, doesn't get a lot of notice from it uh, because, you know, he's not putting up big numbers. But I tell you what, you put that guy in the playoffs, his habits are unreal. Everything he does, he's always on the right side of the puck. He can play him in any situation. He's tough. He's character. He sticks up for his teammates. And sure enough, he's coming to the playoffs now. He's got he's got more goals in the playoffs and already than he did all year. Uh, it just goes to show you what kind of player can be so effective in the playoffs. And of course, last game, Wenberg uh, scoring a big goal. Um, they got a lot of guys that can get to the middle and. And as we've seen, most of the goals that are scored are right in front of the net, and that's where those uh, last games, the overtime goal was scored with a deflection in front. Yeah, but Moose, you guys got a C on a swatter who's chicken wing and jaws. Whoa. Yeah. You got man. guys chicken wing and jaws, Moose. We got I, – you know, I know he got fined 5000 bucks, and uh, Florida Panthers skipper said if we could pass around a hat to collect <laughs> some money so that he can eat and feed his family after the $5,000 <laughs> fine for this. It became a four-minute, I believe, penalty here, and there's obviously a lot of different takes on this. This is just Trouba hockey? Like, this is just who he is? Even, if, like, with the C on his chest, is there a difference? Like, do you view it differently? Or what are your thoughts on this play and then his play as a whole for the New York Rangers? Well, he only got called for two minutes for elbowing on this play. The other infraction uh, was, uh, uh, I can't remember what, what exactly what it was, but uh, look at, I think Jacob Truba is a hard-nosed hockey player. He's a throwback from the back in the 60s, uh, 70s, uh, when the game was his toughest. Um, he's a guy that when he's on, when you're on the ice, you have half to keep your head up. Um, he's, um, uh, he's a punishing player. Um, but more importantly than that, um, 
he's uh, an incredible leader. And I don't know if you guys know Jacob or got to know Jacob at any time uh, over your time on the air and all that, but a uh, very conscientious guy, very smart guy, uh, got uh, uh, awarded the captaincy of the New York Rangers and and took it to heart. He uh, he did a lot of re- reading. He did a lot of uh, speaking to uh, people in the uh, leadership uh, community. Um, and, you know, the Rangers have gone on to have an historic season this year. And it doesn't happen without uh, great leadership, in my opinion. And, of course, he's got help in the leadership to, uh, aspect. But someone has to take the, the charge in the leadership uh, um a dress room and uh, Jacob has done that in my opinion. Now I, th- I think he did get lucky in that play uh, that he didn't make direct contact uh, yeah. uh, with the head or would have been a different story. Uh, all this gets reviewed. Uh, the NHL reviews it. Uh, the people in Toronto review it. They deemed it was not a major penalty. Uh, we can debate all day long whether it was or wasn't. It was a dirty check. Um, and if he would have made direct contact, uh, mm-hmm. my guess is it probably would have been a different outcome. But um, I would tell Jacob myself, uh, don't stop playing the way you play. Uh, he's, he's effective the way he, he plays the game, and uh, he gets the other team's attention for sure. Yeah, certainly. Uh, remember, he was the one that uh, swan dived into the boards. Yes, mm-hmm. against yeah. Carolina. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost cut that guy's head off. Yeah, and I believe Moose came in and said, hey, don't change the way you – you know, if he hits there, different story. <laughs> PK but, too, yeah. yeah, PK <laughs> said the same exact thing it's kind of he uh jacob truda also or truba also the winner of the uh mark messier leadership award this year there you oh. go. Moss. There you, go. Moss. you know captainship you got to do what you got to do now let's talk about that game though tone has a question for you about a stat yeah most uh every single game i've ever been to all of the crowd says is you know when they shoot! Like, shoot the puck okay <laughs> pucks on net uh the panthers had 108 shot attempts uh, in that game against the Rangers, uh, who had 44. Is there a difference between pucks on net versus good pucks on net, and how do you kind of toe that line as far as as when to shoot the puck? Well, that's a great question, and I saw Paul Maurice being uh, interviewed this morning about that, and he said himself that he would have liked to have seen them hold the puck a little bit longer and create better openings. Um, it's sometimes it's very hard to get a, even a puck. You'd think it's easy to get a shot on net, but uh, players are taught to get in shooting lanes, and and I don't know how many block sh- shot blocks uh, were uh, total in, in in the whole entire game, but I imagine that there's a lot. A lot of those shot attempts miss the net as well because the guys are in the lanes, but uh, it's a different philosophy from team to team to player to player. Um, I know um, nowadays they like to get the goalie moving east to west, so they hang on to it and wait for that extra. Some teams wait for an extra or better opportunity uh, to get the goalie out of position. Uh, Carolina was a high shot attempt team. They like to get a lot of rubber at the net. So it's really kind of gets down to a certain philosophy that you think of the way you want to play the game. Uh, but I think, you know, that, that was a lot of shot attempts. If you watch the game, um, they uh, the Panthers dominated the Rangers for uh, long periods, uh, and that's why the shot attempts were so high. They they locked or they they hemmed the Rangers into their own zone for minutes at a time, and um, the Rangers, in my opinion, they they got lucky to win that game. Shesterkin uh, played uh, the kind of game that you would want your goaltender to play um, at that particular time. And you're not going to play great every game for two months. You are going to have some games where you're, you don't have your legs or you make mistakes, but, uh, when that happens, you want to have your goaltender, uh, bail you out. And he certainly did in game three. Yeah. He was stopping a lot of rubber, wasn't he? Hey, Jay, he was a lot of rubber on that. Too much damn. A lot of rubber on that. It's gotta be good rubber on that. It sounds like. Well, yeah. I mean, some teams just like tossing a lot of rubber to the net. <laughs> some teams just like dumping rubber. Shoot it. It's a good move. They just dump rubber on the net. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't they? Oh, yeah. they? All the time. These teams dumping rubber. Have to. How about a guy who's really good with the rubber? You know what I mean? He almost burns up the ice with the rubber. Oh, yeah. Connor's got a question for you, Moose. Yeah, Moose, what's going on here in the Oilers-Panthers series? Do we think the Oilers are cooked, or is there always a chance? Stars. What's that? Um, I think the stars, the, you know, the, oh, the stars uh, are, are a tremendous uh, the hockey team. They're probably one me. of the better teams that uh, are playing in the National Hockey League uh, throughout the playoffs so far. They got a lot of depth. They got a great blend of, uh, of youth and experience and veteran guys. And they're getting a lot of mileage out of their young guys. Um, and I think that, uh, and then on top of that, they got a goaltender that's uh, world class. Um, and they're unbelievably well coached. They're so patient the way they play. They never get rattled in the game. We saw last night they get down 2 nothing in the game. 
And they just kept playing their game, methodically started to take the game away from the Oilers. And um, they are a tremendous, tremendous team right now. They skate well, but I think most importantly, they got some obviously some great young talent and some great veteran sh- uh, leadership with uh, Jamie Benn and, and Joe Pavelski. But I think the way they play the game as a as a as a team, uh, all in all three zones, uh, the way they forecheck, they're very tight to the neutral zone. They got one of the most dynamic defensemen in Miro Huskinen, uh, an incredible skater. He's able to match the speed of uh, Connor McDavid uh, at times on the ice, uh, with like no other defenseman can in the league, maybe Makar. Um, so they got a lot of going for them. This is going to be a tough series for the Oilers. The Oilers uh, player are playing well as, uh, at uh, in the first three games, but that was a tough uh, one for them to lose last night when they got up two nothing and then lost the lead. Yeah, and you know the thing about it is McDavid has a lot of pressure on him. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. literally has a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. On him, which Ty leads to a question for Ty. Yeah, Moose. When it comes to McDavid and the Oilers, the kind of narrative all season was, hey, he. McDavid's got to win one this year with how good he is and how everyone talks about he's he's the face of the ho- of the NHL. He's the best player in hockey, um, and with all that you know, kind of weight on his shoulders. Do you agree with that narrative? Do you think this is their best chance to win this year? And also, is it one of those things where he may he might not take as much of the heat because in these games where they lose, it's pretty obvious that they don't have that kind of top end goaltending that you do need to win a Stanley Cup. Well, I, I, there's no excuses uh, in, in the end, and nobody really cares about the excuses uh, of why you didn't win. Um, you know, uh, Connor's going into his ninth year, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken. And um, okay. I think every player, obviously, um, is going to be judged on whether uh, they win a Stanley Cup. You look at the Super Bowl quarterbacks, they're, they're in a different uh, mm-hmm. conversation than every other quarterback that plays in the, or that played in the league. Uh, they have the quarterbacks club uh, because of it, uh, and um, and I think if you look at all the great players that have played the game um, and put up incredible numbers individually, statistic- statistically, um, the one thing that uh, some of them never had the opportunity is win a Stanley Cup, and I think for Connor. My guess is that he's at the point of his career now where nothing else matters. Uh, unfortunately, in our sport, in most sports, especially in hockey, because you know the best player can only be on the ice uh, less than a half, almost uh, maybe, maybe, maybe a little less than 40 40 percent of the time of the game. So they don't, they can't have as big an impact individually on the game as some other sports. So you're really at the mercy of the people around you. Uh, the dedication on and off the ice. Winning isn't uh, doesn't happen by accident. It's a it's a it's a way of life. It's a journey. It's a process to learn how to win, and you have to do it collectively as a team. One individual can't want to need to win and want to win, and then have four or five guys on the team that uh, don't want it as much. Everybody on the team has to want it just as bad. And um, and I think that to your point and to your question is this. I think. From my perspective, this is Edmonton's best chance since Connor's been there. He's uh, he's he's surrounded with a little more depth than he has in the past. Uh, the defense is a little bit uh, better, bigger, stronger than it has in the past, right. and um, and they're counting on Skinner to make the saves. And so far, look at there's four teams left, uh, and all, out of out of 32, so they're doing something right, and they have an opportunity to to go to the Stanley Cup Finals. And if they do, they're going to earn it against a very strong Dallas Stars team. No, nah, there's four teams left, but only one team wins. Everybody else needs to uh, blow it up. That's right. Yep. Start it over. I don't know if that's how <laughs> hockey is, but it is every other sport. Moose, we appreciate the hell out of you for joining us, man. Always great talking to you guys. Thanks for having me on. Hey, that game seven, right? We got a doc coming? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In October, yeah. We uh, we bought all the rights to game seven and all the uh, trademarks and branding, so we're doing a docuseries with Amazon uh, that will be uh, – uh, with Connor Shell, who, who did Last Dance and uh, mm. Words and Pictures, and we're so excited about it. And of course, the '94 Rangers are one of those, and uh, Cubs, Indians, and a few others. That uh, it's going to be an amazing uh, docu series. Hey, we, pre- we can't wait to watch it. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to watch it, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Messier. Yeah. Ooh.